that makes it better. Amen. Glory to God. So now it looks like we're live on all networks. We're live on all networks. Talking about walking in the in the in the in the principles of the kingdom of God will help you understand the keys of the kingdom. Because the keys of the kingdom is related to the word of God. Amen. So as we come to understand what God is saying to us and begin to walk in the knowledge of his word, we begin to we also begin to understand the keys of the kingdom because the keys of the kingdom is related to the word. Amen. How do you know that, Pastor? Because when I when when, when you're going through different changes in life, when you're going through different changes in life, you you haven't uh, you go through different attacks and different 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 changes. The key to that to you overcoming that area is to know and understand the Word of God. Amen. Because to know and to understand the Word of God, you release the uh, you 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 go to the Word of God. You begin to pray your prayers, believing your prayers, aligning up with the Word of God, and God will hear your word, hear your prayer. And answer you speedily. Why? Because he loves you that much that he will not want to see you suffer. Amen. So when I look at the Word of God, when I look at the Word of God, when I was going through uh, challenges, uh, even when I'm on the ministry field in different nations and stuff, I always, always remember that God said, "Behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpents and over scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy." And He said, "And nothing shall by any means hurt you." So I remember those words, and I hope, and I and I remind God of those words while I'm out on the battlefield, Amen. While I'm on the ministry field, because I'm out there to win souls to the kingdom for the kingdom of God to the kingdom of God, and I'm not out there to be beat up by the devils. I'm out there to this to demolish the powers of death, the devils. How, how am I going to do that? By standing on the word of God. Why? Because the word of God has given me the authority and the power through the knowledge of who Jesus is in my heart and in my life. Amen. Therefore, when I take a stand on the word of God, I'm not standing in my own strength. Remember what he says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10. Find my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Amen. So when I take a bold stand for the kingdom of God's sake, I don't. I don't stand in my own strength. I don't stand in my own ability, even though it's me standing there, but yet I'm not dependent on what I can do. I'm dependent on what he can do. Amen. So I begin to exercise the keys of the kingdom, which is the knowledge of the word of God. Amen. The keys of the kingdom, which is the knowledge of the word of God. Remember when Jesus came to Caesar Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, in the Matthew, let's look at Matthew chapter 16, verse number 13. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 13. Amen. Now let's look here because I want you to see this because see, we're about to understand the keys of the kingdom and how they operate. Amen. Now what he said in verse number 13, Matthew chapter 16, verse number 13, and when Jesus came into the coast of Caesar Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I the son of man am? Amen. And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah are one of the prophets. Amen. So now Jesus, he sees He's, he's seeing what the people are saying about him, but now he's going to bring it to home because he want to know exactly what his followers, those of his, his disciples, he want to know exactly what they thought about him. So he's bringing it to home right now, and he's about to get their understanding of what, who they think he is. Now, they had, I, I, I could imagine when he asked the question, there was a silence, amen, because they began to wonder, well, who is he? If, if he's not John the Baptist, if he's not Jeremiah, if he's not one of the prophets, then who is he? Then all of a sudden, Peter received the message from the, 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 the presence of God, amen, downloaded to his heart. And notice what he says right here in verse number 15. And he said, he said, but whom say ye that I am? And verse number 16 said, and Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the Son of of the living God. Now what happened here, the church foundation is being established. The foundation of the church is being established right here. How do you know that, Pastor? Because knows what he said. Knows what he said goes on to say. Verse number verse number uh, verse number 
Verse number 17. And Jesus answered said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, notice what he said, but my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. But my Father, which is in heaven. Verse number 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. Now notice what he said now. And upon this rock I will build my church. So we see the foundation of the church is being set in position through revelation knowledge. Amen. Through revelation knowledge. That was the key to establishing the church. Amen. To set the foundation for the church. Revelation knowledge from the presence of Almighty God came and come down into the heart of man, bringing revelation knowledge of who Jesus was and revealing himself to them as the Son of God. See, Jesus, Simon Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, who, who else had that revelation? No one but Peter. Why? Because God spoke to Peter. And then he said, Upon this revelation knowledge, upon this rock, with these keys that you have received by the Spirit, I will establish <coughs> my church. Amen? I will establish my church. <coughs> and the gates of hell, now notice what he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now when he talked about the gates of hell, he reminded me I'm being reminded of Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. So that showed me that God has given us the dominion over the work of his hand. See, now let me, that, speaking of that, remember in the beginning when God created man, God gave Adam, he gave Adam charge over all the work of his hand. In other words, Adam was the God of the earth, of the world. Amen. Adam was the God of the world. Amen. How do you know that, Pastor? Because you see, uh, God gave, he gave him the opportunity to name everything. And he and he, then when he got done naming everything, he gave him a woman to be beside him. And then after he gave him the woman to be beside him, he and he, and he, and he began to, he commissioned him. Amen. And he told him, you can have everything in the garden except this tree thou shalt not eat of. Amen. That's in the, midst of the, in the midst of the garden. Now, I call it the tenth of everything that God had given man. God took kept a tenth of it back for himself. A tenth of it back for himself. And that was the, the, the tree of, of knowledge and good and evil. Amen. And he said not to eat of that tree. But then when he disobeyed God, you see, Adam had authority. Adam had divine authority throughout the earth because he was just like God. He had he just like God. Now, when he sinned, he 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 lost access to all this that God had given him. Now, notice what God gave him. He gave him he gave him access over all the work of his hand, which was the cattle on a thousand hills, the silver and the gold that's in the mountains and the hills, and the, and, and all the richness of the world. Everything was in Adam's hand. Amen. God, Adam had it all. Amen. But then when Satan be, deceived them, Adam lost control over all that he had. Even the keys wasn't operating for him properly at that point. Why? Because he had given his authority, his dominion over to Satan. Amen. So now God sent in his son Jesus in the likeness of sinful flesh and he restores man back to the rightful position in God through his blood shed on Mount Calvary, amen, and, the, and, 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 and us receiving him, re accepting him as our Lord and Savior, the keys of the kingdom is now being restored to man, amen, and now we've been, released, we've been given a power once again. Just like Adam had in the Garden of Eden. Now the church has been given power once again over all the powers of the enemy. And he said, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke chapter 10, verse number 19. Amen. So God has given us everything we need to do what he called us to do. But are we, uh, but do we understand what he has given us? That is the problem right there. Not many people understand 
what God has given them. And because they don't have an understanding of what God has given them, they are not walking in the in the in the in the area that they can actually operate in. Amen. Remember what Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse number 12. He said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. Well, if you understand that you've been given the keys to the kingdom, then you can unlock, you can unlock everything spiritually around you. Amen. You can unlock the wisdom of God. You can unlock the knowledge of God. You can unlock the, the, the hidden riches of God. How are you going to do that? By meditating in the Word. Meditating in the Word. Reading the Word of God. Staying in, 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 in sync with God. Amen. And the Word. Why? Because in the Word, faith is going to be produced in our hearts. In the Word, the ability of God is going to begin to rise up on the inside of us. In the word, we're going to see ourselves speaking to the principalities, to the powers, and to the rules of darkness of this world, and spiritual weakness in our places, commanding them to stay back. In the word, we will find ourselves speaking to the trees. Amen. Amen. And, and just like Jesus spoke to the tree on the way to Bethlehem, he spoke to the trees that no man shall eat fruit of thee hereafter forever, and his disciples heard it. What did he do? He exercised divine authority through words. Amen. Now notice he released the key of God. He released the key. Demonstrating God's word is acting on the keys of the, of the kingdom. Amen. Because once you understand you've been given the keys of the kingdom, my God, yo, I'm telling you right now that you can accomplish so much that you thought that was impossible for you to accomplish. When you understand who you are as a child of God, you'll know that what God has given you is a whole lot more than what the devil has taken from you. Amen. Because when God began to bring restoration to your heart, he began to bring you to a place of inner peace. He began to heal you of your deep. Now listen to this. He began to heal you of your deep wounds that only you and he know about. And the people that afflict those wounds on you. Amen. And then he began to he, he began to show you the value of forgiveness. Forgiveness. Because when you forgive, you shall be forgiven. Amen. Then he began to show you how to walk by faith. Amen. Remember he said in Romans 10, 17, so that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if I hear the word of God and I begin to apply what I hear, I begin to try to uh, understand what I'm hearing and begin to and try to apply what I'm hearing. What am I doing? I'm taking a step of faith on something that I know nothing about, only that I believe. <clears throat> only that I believe. And if I believe I can, folks, I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. So when I look, when I'm when I'm talking about the keys of the kingdom, <clears throat> I'm talking about God's ability rising up on the inside of you and me. Now, how do we receive these keys? The keys, the keys are used to unlock or lock doors. Keys are used to unlock and lock doors. Amen. Pacific doors Jesus has in mind in this passage. We are, we, you know, we, we, we're reading right here in, in Ephesians, right here in, a, in a Matthew, I mean. The passage that Jesus is referring to right here is unlocking the keys, the Unlocking the doors to the church. Unlocking the doors to the church. Amen. So we see here, Jesus is laying the foundation of the church right here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 20. Let's look at that. Ephesians 2, 20. Amen. In Ephesians 2, 20, he says right here. There we go. Ephesians 2 and 20. And it says, And are built... And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone. So we we gonna build the church has been established upon the, the the apostles and the prophets, Amen. And Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. My God, now that's that, 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 that that's 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 powerful. That is powerful because the disciples will be the leaders of the new institution and. Jesus is the is giving them the authority to act. Jesus, 
the, I'm going to say it again. The apostles is going to be the, the leaders of the institution that Jesus is establishing. Amen. But Jesus is the one that is empowering them to act. What do you mean? Once they come to, once they spend time with him, they learn the principles, they learn the, the concepts, and they begin to exercise the keys of the knowledge that they have received, and they begin to be seen as Jesus were seen. Jesus was a miracle worker. Amen. Jesus was a miracle worker. Now he's telling you, if you want to, if you want, if you want to do the, you want to do what I do, then you got to be like I am. <laughs> That's powerful. You want to do like I do, then you got to be like I am. What, what, how was he? Amen. Jesus was a, a man separated for the purpose of God's use. Amen. Was separated for the purpose of God's use. So we see here in the book of Matthew chapter 16 once again Matthew chapter 16 once again notice we said verse number glory to God verse number verse number verse number 17 he said and I and Jesus answered and said unto him talking about Peter blessed art thou Simon by John for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven amen and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter verse number 18 Matthew 16 18 that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church. See, God is establishing his foundation right here on the knowledge of the word of God. Friend, that is the keys that God wants us to understand. Because, see, our foundation in God is established upon the knowledge that we receive from God. Amen. As we receive the word of God, as we receive the principles of God, as we receive the knowledge of God. Now, get this. And begin to understand it. When you understand it, now you're able and capable of applying it to your life. But until you understand it, it's just like uh, any other word. But the moment you begin to understand the word, it begin to you begin to uh, and begin to apply that word. It begin to create the life. And the nature of God on the inside of you. Remember what he said. His word, the word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Amen. It's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And as we take the word of God and learn the word of God, meditate upon the word of God, and allow the word of God to bring in us that inward change. And what is that inward change that you need? Some of us might need deliverance. Some of us might need healing. Some of us might need to be uh, just 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 have a peace of mind, amen. But whatever it is that you need, it is located in the Word. Remember, what Jesus said in John, excuse me, in the Book of Proverbs, chapter four, verse number twenty. He said, "My son, attend to my words." Why he wants you to attend to his word? Because in his word there are life and health and healing to all their flesh, amen. In his word, there is peace forevermore. In his words, the word of God has the ability to bring you to a place, I like this, that you will see your expected end. Amen. Glory to God. Because you see, God is not, he, he's not afraid to, 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 to release you to act on the word. You're the one that have to take the initiative <clears throat> you don't have to get up and make a move <coughs> excuse me and begin acting on the word of God <clears throat> wow thank you Jesus amen so we know that God's word is ready to work if we are ready to go to work with it Amen. See, God's word will work when you put it to work. And that, in other words, your faith in God's word will determine whether or not you're going to exercise the keys of the kingdom. Because when you begin to exercise the keys of the kingdom, it's just like you become the you become the light of the world. You become the light of the world. What do you mean, Pastor? When you begin to exercise the keys of the kingdom, you're going to walk in the world as a light, and people are going to be drawn to you. They are walking in darkness, but because they see light, they're going to be drawn to the light that you represent. And when they come to you, you're going to open up your heart. You're going to begin to 
give them an opportunity to enter into the kingdom. How are you going to do that? By introducing them to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now that right there is the is one of the powerful keys that you would ever need to understand right there. Because once you can open up heaven above these people that are walking in darkness, once you open up heaven above, above them, they are going to come into the light where you are. Now they're going to want to learn more about what you know or what you have begun to understand and how you're going to, and then now you're not just a bringing them to the light. Now you become an instructor. You become a teacher. You become a guide. You become one that has answers. Amen. Because if you're doing it, you should have answers. <laughs> if you don't have answers, then then people are gonna come to you, and then they're gonna then they're gonna think, well, well, why do I need to come to you? You don't know what to, you don't, you can't help me. Amen. How can you help me? You can't even help yourself. Because they when they come to you and you don't have the answer, they go, they're gonna say, I don't, I don't need to, I don't need to be right here. I don't need to be here. Why? How can you help me? You you still living the same lifestyle that you always live. Amen. But that's one thing that you have to understand. God wants you. To become transformed. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. See, God, when you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, amen, then he said the verse number 2, he said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. See, as you come to God, as you begin to understand the principles and the king of the kingdom of God, and you allow the word of God to begin to work it in you, that word is going to cause you to be transformed. And as you begin to be transformed, you're going to be changed from inside out. You're still going to look the same, but on the inside, you've been changed. Now, that change is going to cause you to even, it's going to even cause your conversation to change. It's going to cause your vocabulary to change. Where you used to walk around and talk about how sick you are, how, how bad you feel, now you could now you because you've learned you learn how God think you learn how God operates you learn that God operates on in faith you going your your words are going to change because you don't want to continue to speak those negative words over your life as you formerly did before you acknowledged Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior amen now that you've been transformed now that you've been changed your vocabulary changes, and now when the sickness comes upon you, then you can look at the word of God and say, oh, Jesus, right here you said that you bore my sicknesses and you carried my diseases, and you said, by your stripes, I am healed. So I choose not to talk about how I feel. I choose to talk about what you said about me. Because if I say what you said about me, then what I'm saying over my life is going to eventually cause my body to come in alignment with what you said, because what you said is all powerful. Amen. What you said is all powerful. And when I pay attention to what you said, and I begin to, uh, to repeat what you said over and over in my life, that, that word is going to begin manifest in my heart and in my body. Now I'm being transformed from darkness to light because sickness is not of the light. Sickness is of the darkness. I'm being translated from darkness to light. Amen. God is bringing us to a place that if we will pay attention to his word, you know what he said in Proverbs chapter 4, verse number, verse number 20, my son, Incline thy ear to my saying. In other words, pay attention to what I'm saying. Amen. Incline thy ear to my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Then he tells you why. For they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. So you see, the keys of divine health is right there in the word of God. And not many people understand that. Because they don't understand it, they still walk around and say, Oh God, will you please help me? Oh God, I'm in so, oh God, help me. I used to be that way. I was lying in my bed crying like a baby. Oh God, help me. Oh. I was just boohooing, you know. But then all of a sudden, I heard the word of God, I heard the Spirit of God speak to me and said, Get up and read your Bible. And from that point on, I knew that the key to my deliverance, the key to my healing, was not laying in my bed crying like a baby. It was not laying in my bed uh, uh, wallowing in self pity. The key to my healing, the key to my deliverance was in the word of God. So I got up and I ran to the door. Instead of going to my Bible like I was instructed to do, I ran to the door thinking that someone was out there trying to mess with me. But when I got to the door, there was no one there. This is, this was, this is, actually, this is actually what happened. 
Amen. I actually did this. And then as I was going back to my bed to re-engage in my pity party, I thought about they might try to slip back up on the door, slip back up on the porch. So I dumped back around to the window. And I looked out the window, pulled the curtain back, looked at the window, thought I could catch him. But I didn't see no one coming there. So I, And as I was going back to my bed again, I remember what I heard God say. Read your Bible. And I realized that my brothers and my sisters, they wouldn't tell me to read my Bible. Because they didn't want, they, they, they kicked me out of the house. I became homeless because of them. Amen. Because they didn't want to hear the word of God. And so my, my mother kicked me out of the house. Now, let me remind you, I just had come home out of the military. I, 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 I didn't have no prayer, to, I didn't have nowhere to go. So I stayed with my mom for, for a while. Until I, I, was, I was staying with her until I found me a place to go. But at the time when I was staying with her, God called me to preach. And when God called me to preach, I became radical. <laughs> oh my God. I became so radical that I started preaching to all of them. Hey Amen. I preached to my mom, preached to my brother, preached to my sister, preached to all their friends and everybody coming around the house. And they thought that I had lost my mind. And my mama said, she, she, I come home one day and she had put all my clothes and all my bedding in a black plastic bag and set it on the back porch in two plastic bags. She said, son, I have to let you go. You can't stay here no more. See, when I started operating in the keys of the kingdom, I became homeless. I became like one without, without a friend. And I didn't have nowhere to stay. I lived in my car for a while. Amen. And uh, thank God I had a car. <laughs> at least I did, at least I had a shelter over me, man. I'm not like a lot of people sleeping on the outside, sleeping out there in the woods, out in the streets or whatever. At least I had a car to sleep in. But at the same time, I went to the park in another city and I bagged my car off in the park because the light stays on in the park all night. But then I got ran out of the park. The police came and saw my car backed off in the park. They said, you can't stay here after hours. You got to go. And I said, okay. I said, what am I going to go now, Lord? What am I going to do now? And so now here I am thinking, what am I going to do? So I go back down into the country and I went around, around, around by the cotton fields and I bagged my car off into the woods. And I backed my car off into the woods so I got off the road so nobody could see me because I, I was ashamed. You know, I didn't want nobody to see me. I didn't. I'm a been called a preacher. I've been homeless and everything. They want no one to see me. So I backed my car off in the woods. And while I, while I had my car backed off into the woods, I laid up on the hood of the car and I started praying. I started talking to God. I said, and I was mad at him too. I, you ever get mad at God? I was mad at God. Amen. And I started saying, God, look at you. You called me to preach and now I'm getting, I'm being kicked out of the house. I don't have nowhere to go. And I, and he started, he, and he spoke back to me. He said, be ye holy for I'm holy. And I said, okay, God, I'll be holy. Just give me a place to stay. And I just pointed my finger toward him. I'll be holy. Just give me a place to stay. And the God said, look across the field. And there was an old house over there. Had no running water. Had no indoor plumbing. Amen. The well was out back. Had to draw it up by rope. And the, and the outdoor bathroom was out, out back house. You know, it's out there. Amen. So that's what we had. That's what I had. Amen. But at the same time, I'm going through a lot of training by the Spirit of God. God is teaching me how to exercise the keys of the kingdom. He teaches me the importance of understanding what he has said in his word. Because until I understand what he said in his word, I will never be able to apply. Amen. So here I am sitting there all by myself now. I got the house all cleaned up. And I'm in there and got everything all ready. And I'm sitting down there, and God tell me, get up and read my Bible. And I ran to the door. No one was there. And so I sat down. I, I didn't have a desk at that time, so I set up an ironing board. And I put my Bibles up on the ironing board. I put the Amplified Bible, put the King James Bible, put the Open Bible, and I put the Matthew Henry Ken Corners up on the ironing board. And I started reading. And I made it to the book of Mark, chapter 16. Book of Mark, chapter 16, and verse number 15, I started reading. And it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and begin to jump off the page at me. You see, just like Peter received revelation, knowledge from God, saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, revealing who Jesus was. God revealed to me because I tapped into the keys of the knowledge of God 
and I was so sick, I was in so much pain, but I tapped into those keys that God has given me concerning divine health and healing. And I began to read that word over and over and over and over. Then all of a sudden, I began to understand what God was saying. And I looked up toward heaven and I said, God, I am a believer. You said, verse number 17, you said, these signs will follow them that believe in my name. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And I said, these signs have followed them that believe in my name. And I said, Lord, I'm a believer. Nobody believes you as much as I do right now because I, I need you now. I believe you. Amen. And so I thought, I started, I started reading that. Then, and then I looked at it again. He said, they shall take up, they, he, they shall take up serpent if they drink any of their things. Should I hurt them? They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And so I saw what he was saying about the believer shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. I saw about the serpent and scorpion and all that stuff too, but I didn't pay no attention to that. I wasn't going to drink anything dead or nothing like that. So I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't hanging around no snakes and stuff like that and scorpion stuff. So I said, Lord, I see what you're saying right here. I see what you're saying. I went to the latter part of verse number 18. He said, the believer shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So I said, Lord, I have two hands and I, and I know that my body is sick. And now, Father, you said I should speak to that. Uh, the, the believer shall, shall just Speak to the infirmity. They, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? So I, I began to cast out that spirit of infirmity that was in my body. I spoke to it with the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I exercised the keys of God that God has given me through the knowledge of his word. I spoke to the sickness that was in my body. And all of a sudden, that sickness, that, that, that spirit of infirmity just left. Just left. And then... Father, you said, the believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Then I lay hands upon my body and I said, in the name of Jesus' body, I command you to be healed right now in Jesus' name. See, first of all, I attacked the devil that was coming against my health. And then I released the word of God, the healing anointing over my body by the laying on of my hands. Amen. He said, the believers shall lay hands on the sick. I was sick. My body was sick. I had two hands. I laid hands upon my body. And just like the word says, and I released the keys of God into my health. And glory to God, even until this day, I am still walking healed. And I'm not saying the devil never tried to get come back on me. I'm saying every time he come, I know how to defend myself. I know how to stand firm. I know how to stand strong. Amen. And that is to stand on the word. That's why he said, my son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear to my sin. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. And then he said, verse number five, said, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Amen. See, you have to understand what God is saying because you carry, you've been given the keys to the kingdom. Amen. As you receive knowledge of who Christ is in you, you come to understand, you need to come to understand that God has placed in your care the ability to exercise the keys of the kingdom. How are you going to exercise them? By spending time with God. God is going to empower you with wisdom, knowledge from above. Wisdom and knowledge from above. That what Peter received when he began to reveal Christ to the rest of the disciples and to Jesus. He said, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Some say that thou art John the Baptist, and others, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Verse, and then, and then he said, but whom do you say that I am? He brought it home, and he wanted to know exactly what they thought he, who he was. And Peter, all of a sudden, received the download from heaven and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Oh, now that changed everything for Peter. Amen. That changed everything for Peter. Amen. And now God is, now the Lord is starting to speak over Peter. He said, Simon, son of, son of, uh, jo, Simon by John. Let me, let me just read it right here because I don't want to get it wrong. Amen. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by John, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. But my Father, which is in heaven. Now notice what he said, verse number 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. See, now he's acknowledging him. He's acknowledging him because of the knowledge that he had received from the Father. He's acknowledging him. Amen. And he said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, upon this revelation, upon this knowledge, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, when we come to understand what God is saying to us in the Word, the Word of God take on a whole new meaning. 
Amen. But I'm telling you, understand, it's just like another history book. But when you begin to understand it, when you begin to understand what God is saying, it brings you to a whole new level. Amen. It brings you to a whole new level. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to raise you up. Look at John chapter 14, verse number 10. Excuse me. John chapter 14, verse number 10. Amen. Glory to God. John 14, verse 10 said, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Amen. See, now we see here that God is not only revealing to us who he is, but now he revealing to us who we are in him. Who we are in him. Amen. Notice what he said now. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Verse number 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. And then he says on verse number 12, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Now he's talking about you and me now. <coughs> he that believeth on me. The works, he that believeth on me. The works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's powerful. Big time. That's powerful. You know why that's powerful? Because it brings me right back to what he said in Ephesians. Let me look. Let me make sure that I'm giving you the right thing. It brings me right back to what he said here in uh, Glory to God. <laughs> yes, yeah, right here in, in, in Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter. Glory to God. In Ephesians chapter 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 2. No, not chapter 2. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. There we go. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. I lost my page. Come back here. Come back here. Ephesians chapter chapter 2. Chapter 2. Look at verse number verse number verse number 6. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 6. He said, verse, verse number 6. And had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. See, we are in Christ Jesus. If we are in Christ Jesus and he has imparted unto us his ability, guess what he says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 21. He said, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 21. For, and he had raised us up together. Now notice what he said. Verse we have been seen in every place in Christ Jesus. Then verse number 20 says, Far above all principalities and powers and mighty dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and had put all things under his feet. If they're under his feet, then they're under our feet as children of God. Amen. See, God knows exactly where we stand, <coughs> but he wants us to understand where we stand. Now I want to take you back to a place now in John's gospel. This time I want to take you to John chapter, John, John gospel chapter 15. Amen. John gospel chapter 15. Glory to his name. John chapter 15. And notice what it says right here. John chapter 15. And notice what it says here. In verse, num verse number 1 it says, I am the vine and ye are the branches. Because I am the vine and my father is the husband. There we go. I am the vine and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that bears not fruit is taken away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. And now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Then in verse number, verse number four it said, Abide in me and I in you. See, God is telling us 
how to get the keys to manifest in our life. Abide in me, verse number 4, John chapter 15, verse number 4. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. See, we can't do what God wants us to do in our own strength. We have to connect to the strength of the Spirit of the living God through the Word of God. <clears throat> through the Word of God. And then it said, verse number 5, it says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abided in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Now, where... Now, who is the vine? God is the vine. Who is the branches? We are the branches. Who bears the fruit? We bear the fruit. How do you bear the fruit? By your lifestyle. Maintaining a clean lifestyle. Walking in the word. Walking in connection with God. Amen. Glory to God. What happens when you do that? You allow the keys, the keys of the kingdom to manifest in your life. You allow the keys of the kingdom to manifest in your life. What do you mean? What do you mean you allow the keys of the kingdom to manifest in your life? Look at, look, let's read, let's read a little bit, let's read again, right? Here, verse number seven now. Verse, verse number seven. He said, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. See, how did it get done? I exercised the keys. God heard me and he released what I asked for, because I not only ask, but I ask in faith. No, nothing doubting, only believing. Amen. I ask in faith. Ask and you shall receive. Amen. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receive it, and he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it, it shall be opened unto him. Amen. So we see what God is saying in his word is true. Amen. We ask. We ask. And we receive. Now, how do, how do I get this to operate in my life? How can I apply this to my life? Now, I'm going to show you now how to open up the door of the word of God until the wisdom of God so that you can get the keys of the kingdom for yourself. Those of you that don't know that you have them, or you might know that you have, but don't realize how you got them. So you, because you don't know how you got them, you're not using them. Okay, let's take you now to the book of Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Woo! Glory to God. Y'all got me sweating up here. Got me preaching so hard. Get her done. <laughs> it's okay. Amen. Romans chapter 10. Notice what he said. Look at verse number one first. Verse number one said, Brethren, my heart desired prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. You see, a lot of people have a zeal of God. A lot of us in the church today even have a zeal of God. But we really don't know God. We have a zeal of God, but we really don't know him. But notice what he said. Verse number three, he said, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, and not submitting themselves to the righteousness of God. See, even though they're in the right place, they're still not cleaving to the right thing. They're not cleaving to the word so that the word can bring about that inner change. In other words, they hear it, but yet still they have problem believing it. They hear it, but have problem believing. But notice what he said, verse number eight. Verse number eight. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. See, you read the word, you you hear the word, you read the word, but still without understanding, because you see, you're trying to understand as a natural person, like a history book or a, a psychology book. This is not a history book. This is not a psychology book. This is the word of God. Amen. It is spiritually discerned. Not naturally discerned. It is spiritually discerned. So you need to be born again in order to understand what God is saying here. Amen. So it said right here in verse number 8 again. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. And that is the word of faith which we preach. Verse number 9 is so important to you right now. Amen. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. So now... <coughs> If I want to get the keys of the kingdom to operate in my life, now I have to understand what Christ, what the Bible just said right here in verse number 9. Amen. See, I can't receive what God is saying to me from a natural standpoint. I have to receive it by faith. 
I don't know if he can come into my heart. But if I release my faith, and if I can believe, I just like when I asked Jesus to come, I, I, I never seen Jesus in the flesh. I never touched him. I never shook hand with him. I never looked in his eyes. But he said, verse number nine, that if, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Well, I don't have no problem believing that. Do you? Amen. So I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and I believe that he died for my sin. Even though I can't see it, I believe it. Why do I believe it? Because I see the evidence in people's lives. I see the evidence of Christ in people's lives. Because I see people walking in love when they used to hate everything that they see, everybody that they see, want to fight everybody all the time. And now all of a sudden, they invited Jesus in their heart. Their whole life, their whole nature have changed like that. Amen. So I can see the evidence of Jesus in the heart of man. Okay. So now verse number 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I, 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 I see the evidence, and so now I'm inviting him into my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. See, now I have set the stage so that the principles of the kingdom will be manifested in my life. How? Through the acknowledgement of Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. I invited him in. And now look what it said in verse number 13. Verse number 13 said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So now, there's no, there's no doubt about it. I called upon the name of the Lord, and now, according to the word of God, I am saved. I am saved. Now, that legally gives me the right to come into his presence and to begin to fellowship with him, to begin to talk with him, to begin to try to glean some understanding of who he is so that my life can come in alignment with him so that he and I will become one. Like he said in John chapter 14. And then in, in, in John chapter 15. Abide in me and I in you. Amen. See, when we begin to come together as one, the knowledge of this word of God is very important because now that we become one, I need to know what this book says so that I can apply to my life so that when I'm operating in this earth, I'm not operating as a mere man. I'm operating as a son of man. The keys of the kingdom is now ready to be activated in the earth through my words. Woo! Amen? Why? How? Because I've given myself to Jesus. Amen? My time is up. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all get anything out of this today? Yes, sir. I believe, I believe, I believe you did. Glory to God. I believe I did too. Amen. I have three minutes left. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, that you would move in a supernatural way upon every heart and every soul under the sound of my voice. And Father, as I give this altar call, Father, I ask that you would bring them to a place, Father, where they desire to understand more about the keys of the kingdom that they be wanting to walk in the principles of who you are in the kingdom. Now, Father, as I lead them through this prayer, touch their hearts and bring them to a place of acknowledgement. In Jesus' my name, I praise this now. I, pray, I praise you for this now in advance in Jesus' name. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit. And renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. And that you died for my sin. Today I confess my sin. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Oh, Shalabakai. If you said that prayer right now, I believe that you just stepped out of darkness into the light. Now because you are in the light, you need to learn what it is to be in the light. You need to study the word of God. And I would encourage you to start at the book of John Gospel. Read the book of John Gospel. <clears throat> because it reveals who you are in Christ. And then go back and start reading back the book of Matthew. Then go all the way back through the, the New Testament. 
Amen. Once you go through the New Testament, then go all the way back to Genesis and come all the way back to the book of Matthew. Read it all. Get it all. Get a, get a, a, a glimpse of it all. Amen. And let God minister to your heart. Amen. Now it's time for us to take about morning offering. Those of you with us by the internet, if you want to sow a seed today, you can go to my website, LarryBergensMinistries.com. That's one word, Larry Bergen Ministries, L A R R Y B I R G A N S at. No, not at. <laughs> Larry Bergen Ministries, L A R R Y B I R G A N S M I N. M I N I S T R I S, Labrigan Ministries.com. Amen. And you will find that you can sow your seed there, or you can go to Cash App, put my name in Cash App, you can sow your seed there, or you can sow your seed at Venmo. Amen. Sow your seed there, or you can also sow your seed, go to just go to my uh, postal service, that's P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. That's P.O. Box 417913. Sacramento, California, 95841. Father, I praise you and I thank you for all right now, Father, that is being a part of this ministry, that's supporting this ministry. And God, I just bless them. I thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, if anybody would like prayer right now, I pray for you. Anybody want prayer right now, I pray for you. You want, you want prayer? Come on, let me pray for you. And while I'm praying for him, I'm going to pray for you guys later. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord God. I pray for every joint. I pray for every, every pain, Father, that is in his body. I pray for his foot, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I release your healing anointing right now in the name of Jesus. God, but the devil is meant for evil. Let it be turned around for your glory. As I put my hand on his shoulders, I release the anointing to go down through the bone structure. In the name of Jesus, bringing every joint into alignment, bringing every pain, driving out every pain of his body in Jesus' name. And let your healing flow to every organ right now. Amen, amen, and amen. Be healed in Jesus' name. How you hurt your foot? Soccer. <laughs> I hear you. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Father, I pray for those that are with us by the internet now. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch, that you would minister, that you would strengthen, that you would empower them to be everything that you created them to be. And Father, I covenant with you now that I will give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' mighty, majestic name. We love you. Join us tonight at 6 30. Until then, God bless. Bye bye. shut off today. <laughs>